as dangerous as she is beautiful, Anastasia de Cobre is the quintessential femme fatale. She's one of the most powerful criminals in the world, having those in the highest ranks of Cobra in her seductive grasp. From Cobra to Mars Industries to Sienna Miller, today we're peeling back the layers and exploring the origin and the history of the Baroness. Before we begin, let me thank you for watching this channel, JLS Comics. Whether you're returning or new here, I thank you. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We upload videos just like this every week. All right, let's jump into our story. Like her gnome de guerre suggests, the Baroness was born into a wealthy aristocratic family hailing from somewhere in Europe. Her file card from India says she is heiress to an industrial fortune. Ah, the family business. Her parents treated her and her brother Eugen quite well. In fact, she and Eugen often used their wealth and socioeconomic status for philanthropic ventures. One such venture involved delivering medical supplies to Saigon, Vietnam. This was during the Vietnam War's Tet Offensive, the same time that Snake Eyes, before he was Snake Eyes, was deployed. When Anastasia and Eugen got to the warehouse where their supplies were deposited, they discovered that their contacts were actually selling the medical supplies to buy weaponry, which would then be distributed throughout their military infrastructure and up the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They shot and killed Anastasia's brother just as Snake Eyes showed up and killed those two men. This is when Anastasia heard the gunshots, rushed in, and saw Snake Eyes standing over the three bodies, and for the longest time, she thought Snake Eyes killed her brother. And it was this incident that caused Anastasia to start her downward spiral to anger, hatred, disillusionment, to radicalization, terrorism, and ultimately what led her to the doorstep of Cobra. It's the story of many a character. How we don't always start out this way, that we're born good, but like DC Comics the Joker says, all it takes is one bad day. After this, Anastasia Anastasia de Cobre became the Baroness. And this is basically her story, but there are so many gaps in this. When we get to the IDW and Mark and Draco's run, and the G.I. Joe Origins issue number 12 specifically, we get to fill in some of the pieces of her story. Her father arranged a marriage for her when she was young with a guy named Lord Alberti, and she was outraged at this and ended up running away. Anastasia found herself in Rome and in the grasp of a terrorist organization named Red Hand. She ended up blowing up the de Cobre estate, killing both of her own parents in the process. Ian put her on the radar of Cobra. Also with this IDW run, the Joes and Baroness ran into J. Scott Campbell's Danger Girls and Abby Chase. It's a cool story. You should read it. But then with the Larry Hama IDW continuity that we have now, as recently as issue 252, we get even more of her story. In that, she went to university in Edinburgh, Scotland, and there she met James McCullen of the Clan McCullen, a laird, meaning an owner of an estate from the Highlands of Scotland. McCullen, or Cully as he likes to be called, would go on to become Destro. And it was here that Destro gave her that nickname, Baroness. In the live action, her backstory is different. She's played by Sienna Miller, and her name is Anna Lewis, and she was married to Duke from the G.I. Joes. Duke was supposed to keep an eye on her brother, Rex Lewis, but they were out on a mission, and there was an explosion from a military airstrike, and with the presumption that he was KIA, it caused Anna and Duke to break off their marriage. She later found herself with Baron Daniel de Cobre, who worked for Mars Industries, and he also had his own particle accelerator company called de Cobre Laboratoire Scientifique. On the side, her brother Rex discovered Dr. Mindbender and his nanomite nanotech. He healed himself and he became the doctor, ultimately transforming himself into Cobra Commander. But while he was the doctor, he's the one who injected Anna with nanomites and that transformed her into the Baroness. But that's the movies. Let's jump back to publication history. The Baroness is as old as G.I. Joe or real American hero comic books themselves. Debuting in 1982's very first issue. In fact, we get to see her before we get to see very many of the Joes themselves. But in that issue, it found her in confrontation with the Joes over Dr. Dr. Burkhart and something called the Doomsday Device. By G.I. Joe issue 14, Cobra Commander brought in a new commander to his inner circle and the Cobra Chain of Command. Yep, it was Destro, but as we said, she already knew him and she says this there. Destro is now the leader of a company called Mars, the Military Armament Research Syndicate, and became the primary supplier of weapons and advanced weapons applications to Cobra. Destro wanted to overthrow Cobra Commander and take over, but Cobra Commander knew this, but he kept him close anyway because his R&D, his weapons, his supply chain from Mars to Cobra was vital. Destro continued continues to this day to be romantically involved with the Baroness. In G.I. Joe Order of Battle number 10, we learn that she was horribly disfigured during a night op, which resulted in her receiving tons of plastic surgery, which accounts for some of her beauty and, you know, her current looks. But this is actually the backstory of the chameleon, who is Baroness's half-sister from France, named Erica Laten. But that bit is from IDW's continuity, the company that took over publication after issue 155 from Marvel. They're still publishing. They had to fill in that backstory because the real reason, it's interesting, but it's 
it's much less sexy. In 1997, the 15th anniversary line was planned, but around the same time, and with a re-release of her figure, the version 2 of her figure, hitting toy shelves, trademarks were starting to expire. Production was running into these problems and delays, and when the line was released, people didn't like it all that much, and it really didn't sell that well. And at the same time, Larry Hama was ending his run as the file card writer. It's a perfect storm. Then 1999 hit, and there were no new G.I. Joe toys. There was a whole gap in production. And trademarks were continuing to expire, Baroness included, so they had to rename Baroness as Chameleon, work out the backstory later while they used the Chameleon name, and then they got in 2002 the trademark back. After a plot with Major Blood, which involved Cobra Commander's son Billy, Destro and Baroness searched the planet for the remains of world leaders who had passed long ago. They took DNA from Attila the Hun, from Napoleon, Julius Caesar, and the ancient Carthaginian leader Hannibal to create a new leader for Cobra, Heroes, with the name Serpentor. The next plot, which I touched on in my Cobra Commander video, involved Cobra Commander being shot by Fred Seven and taking the identity of Cobra Commander for himself. Eventually, the Cobra's loyalty were split between the Fred Seven Cobra Commander and Serpentor, and this erupted into this massive civil war which took over Cobra Island. Serpentor died, and this is when Destro and his personal army stepped in with the Baroness to take control. It led to a fight with Baroness being pushed out the door of a helicopter. She survived, and a short time later, she was put in charge of a consulate in New York with Zartan's sister, Zarana. Covertly, they were actually in charge of the Broca Beach operation, which was basically this plot to convert this town in New Jersey to be the new Springfield, so new secret base under the guise of an American town. And it was around the same time that Destro revealed to her that it wasn't actually Snake Eyes that had killed her brother Eugen all those years ago back in Vietnam. There was another plot to take over Cobra from Cobra Commander. There were so many of them. Except it was Destro's son Alexander who was masquerading as his father, along with Mistress Armada. Baroness and Wraith jumped on a plane to escape, but the plane was shot down with a surface-to-air missile. Is Baroness dead? Well, it's comics. But Destro certainly thought so, as he saw that fiery wreckage tumbling out of the sky. Little did they know, anyone really, Baroness was being held at a black site, this G.I. Joe base called The Rock, where she was being held captive and probed for information on the whereabouts of Cobra. Of course, she escaped with the help of the Phoenix Guard, and this is where it's actually revealed that her real last name is Cesarovna. Up until this point, we've been led to think it's Decobre, but is this canon? Is Anastasia Decobre actually Anastasia Cesarovna? Does it matter if it's not Larry Hama? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Later, with Cobra Commander back at the helm of the terrorist organization, Destro left, leaving the Baroness with Cobra Commander, but what Cobra Commander did not know was that this was part of a plot where she was actually working with Destro, and their goal, of course, surprisingly, was to take down Cobra Commander and lead Cobra themselves, isn't that always their goal? And she's currently back working for Cobra, being her normal evil self. In the short-lived Scarlet Strike Force by Aubrey Sitterson, the Baroness becomes Cobra Commander herself, so don't call her Baroness, what she says there. In the United Kingdom, a company named Palatoy was selling a line of action figures and a comic book line called Action Force. The line went to Hasbro, who already had an agreement in place for the G.I. Joes in America. Publication of the Action Force title went from IPC to Marvel UK, which was the British division of Marvel Comics. But under IPC, the Baroness was an Austrian named Anna von Stromberg, who had joined a communist cabal of radicals. In animation, she once went by the name Juanita Hoover during an undercover op. In India, the Baroness was released as an exclusive for Complan with the name Rednock. The Baroness is proficient in intelligence, counterintelligence, she's proficient with all types of weaponry, M16s, AK-47, Kalashnikovs, she knows how to operate a Hiss tank, Vipers, Claws, and yes, Transformers. According to her file card, her principal weakness is the division of her loyalty between Cobra Commander and Destro, but her chief strength would seem to lie in her ability to play them against each other, something I'm sure we would agree is evident in the story we just went through. She's also proficient with laser rifles and sexy librarian glasses wearing, although according to Sienna Miller, those glasses are quite Harry Potter. Despite being depicted in animation and film with a heavy European accent, her creator Larry Hama had the idea that she was an American student who was radicalized after traveling to Europe, so in his mind, she would have had an American accent. He also said in another interview that one reason she came about is because all the villains had their faces hidden behind masks, and he wanted one that didn't. She has also had multiple versions of her action figure, with the first being released in 85 with Series 3, but Ron Rudat, figure designer at Hasbro, was talking about his ideas, and he said, I wanted somebody who was mean looking with the black outfit, tight leather, almost S&M. Beautiful but smart. She had bigger boobs when they first did her. Someone said we can't have her boobs that big, so Roger the sculptor had to shave her boobs down, he said. And that is it, my friends, for this one all about old leather britches herself. As always, let's continue the conversation in the comment section below. I look forward to reading your comments, corrections, and additions to the video. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends, anybody you think who would enjoy a little barrenness. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.